This is probably the most unprepared I've ever been for a service. I just, this whole week I've been saying, oh Lord, I know you want to do something. There's something going on because I got in front of the computer and, and I'm typing stuff up and I found like this frame, but I couldn't fill anything in. And usually when I sit in front of the computer and I start typing, you know, God gives me things through the week and I just start, I could sit in front of a computer for eight hours and, and not stop typing. Um, it didn't happen this week. I think it started because of last week. Um, we went through the Sermon on the Mount and that message has been hitting me. And I read it again last night. And I asked if everybody could read that. If you're not familiar with it, I'll still go over it. But um, uh, we're caring way too much. We are, as individuals and even sometimes as a congregation, we get together and we worship and we praise, yet sometimes we still walk out of these doors and we're still weighted down. There's stuff that we just haven't left. That God's asking us, you know, put that down. You, know, you come every week, and yet you, you sometimes leave here with bags and things that I've asked you to put down. But for some reason, we don't. I'm going to give you a Bible verse. It's Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. It's after the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus is saying, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. So we centered on the, on the middle of the Sermon on the Mount last week. It was Matthew 6.22. And uh, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body will be filled with light. As part of that Sermon on the Mount where, to me, I, when I was reading it, it came out, it stood out. It's like, you know, like Tommy was even saying, God's saying, you know, don't treasure the things of this world. Don't put your value in these things. They're temporary. And then right in the middle of this, Matthew 6, 20, and then all of a sudden to 24, right in the middle, he says, the light of the body is the eye, and if therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. I, I studied it. And... I said last week that the point of this is that God, Jesus is teaching us. He's, he's trying to get us to see something that we're still not seeing. That even in the midst of telling us to not put our hearts and our value into the things of this world, yet it's like Jesus paused to further explain that we are to place God first above everything on this earth. All things. Jesus says that when we're single-eyed, it means we're to look with the single vision that everything that we take in, everything should be light and not darkness. The bad eye lets in darkness. And we talked about this last week. Images and things that we see and things that are placed before us. The good eye sees and focuses on the things of God. And I'm, I'm going over this again because where I believe God wants us to go today there's still way too much thing, darkness and things that we look at that's just not pleasing to God. And I think we are at a point, even as a congregation, where at times I think maybe we've hit a little bit of a ceiling. See, I need to be shaken a little bit right now. My faith. Uh, uh, I want and believe Rock of Life is to be called... Uh, a ministry of God. This is His. This doesn't belong to a man or a person or a group or a council. It's, this is God's. We're just entrusted to it. See, we're to challenge ourselves. I even mentioned last week that sometimes I've, I felt like, even myself, but people may have come in and said, I'm just going to sit here and kind of hide in the back. And I'm just going to, if I hear a good word, that's great. I'll go home. Nothing changes. And God's asking us. He's He's asking us to take the word of God into our hearts and let it wreck us. Let us just change us. We can't hear a good message and hear the word of God and sing and praise and glory and go home and still deal with the same things we've dealt with a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. See, we're supposed to be different. 
than the world. If we let in the light of God, then we shouldn't have any darkness, anything that distracts us from the purpose. And that doesn't mean that we haven't gone through, gone through things in life. We haven't made mistakes, because I have. We have. But God is saying that we are to take in the light and push out the darkness. See, even we as followers of Christ, we can fall into patterns and get complacent. We can go through difficult times and say, well, that's just the way things are. And God's saying, no, that's not the way things are. I, I really believe that each one of us here has something that we are to let into our sight. Light. That there's something that God's asking us through the Sermon on the Mount. And the reason why I asked you to read it and look at it is because Jesus says so much what we can start doing to grow our relationship with him. What we can stop doing that's preventing us from growing our relationship with him. Even encouraging us to continue doing the things that's growing our relationship with Jesus. See, there's a reason why each one of you are here. I, I was talking to somebody like yesterday, yesterday and we were talking about like all the things that you know, we've gone through in our lives and kind of look at each other and go, can you believe this is where we are right now? No. I even told somebody earlier that, you know, 20 years ago, if somebody would have said, or somebody would have been told that, hey, you know Alfredo, that guy, remember him? Yeah. He's a pastor. No way. No. Not him. I had to learn to put down things in my life I was carrying for too long. God was telling me to put it down, put it at the foot of the cross. So I've been asking myself lately, especially the last week or two, what can I do to go deeper in my relationship with God? What can I do to love Jesus even more and to let the Holy Spirit guide me? And I kept thinking of the church collectively, all of us. I have this computer at home that's not working really well lately. It's slowed down. And I try to do things and it's just slowed down. I talked to somebody, and I know some stuff about computers, but I asked a couple guys and they're like, you know, you got to start deleting stuff. There's, you have too much. It slows it down. So I went through my files the other night. And I'm looking, like, I don't need that anymore. What's that doing here? And I don't need this old pictures, old files, old Word documents from work I had years ago or whatever. You start deleting stuff. And it starts running a little faster. It boots up a little quicker. I get to where I want to go a little faster. And I even added a different kind of virus protection to make sure that I w it wasn't infiltrated by anything that's trying to attack. That's us. I really believe, you guys, that there's some junk that we need to delete from our hard drive. I really believe right now that it's kind of like, I believe our ministry is like at this crossroads where we can stay here or we could start to really take some ground, really make a difference in the community, not by our might, not be something we've come up with, but because the power of God in our lives and how he moves and how he accomplishes things because we allow him to. No matter what the hardships that happen and the things that we deal with and struggle, we can be victorious. We can be overcomers. But we have to allow God to filter us, to get the junk out. I don't want to stand still. You know, we've been here for three years and, and God's really done a lot. I just believe he's got so much more to do. But I have to start with myself. I have to say, Lord, you know, what am I doing or not doing? Or what should I stop doing, continue doing, start doing? Yeah. And that's what we are doing right now. I feel like I need to be rebooted. At the same time, it's a challenge. For each one of you to do the same thing. There's too much complacency in the church. This world is deleting God out of everything. It's taking God out of schools and communities and even churches and courthouses. And they don't want crosses and cemeteries. And yeah, Arlington Cemetery and other places where they have veterans memorials, they want the crosses taken out. The church is under attack. And that's not the key part of this message. 
See, I believe that what God is saying is that in order for us to take ground, we have to lay down some things that are weighting us. And you can look at the church and people, but that's not our example because we'll let you down. We're to keep our eyes on Jesus. So in the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus is saying that we are to be single-eyed, we are to keep our eyes on Christ, on the Word of God, and developing our relationship with Him every single day. And like Peter, who started walking on water, he started to sink because he took his eyes off of Jesus. I am frankly am tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of making the same mistakes over and over. I recognize that I'm human and that's going to happen. I don't want to purposely dishonor God. I don't want to make the same mistakes over and over again. We're going to take the rest of the service and we're going to pray for each other. But I want to read this one more time before I recap something. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus, he's saying, do we pursue righteousness? Do we have issues with anger? Have we reconciled issues with somebody that we've hold, held offense on? Is there still sexual morality in our life? Or are we still dealing with addictions and things and at least not get on the track to overcome those things? Have we made a commitment to God and broken it? Do we seek revenge against somebody? Are we holding that hate in our hearts? Do we bring attention to ourselves for deeds rather than giving glory to God? Do we focus on our prayer life? Do we look at worldly possessions more than we look at God and the value of the Word of God? Is there unforgiveness in our hearts? Are we overwhelmed with worry? Are we quick to call others hypocrites without taking inventory of our own issues? Do we seek God above all else? Jesus is asking us, do we have our lifestyle reflecting who Jesus is in his word? Do people see us by our fruit? And is it good fruit or bad? And finally, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, is your house built on a solid foundation? Or is it built on sandy ground? We've got to go deeper in our relationship with Jesus. I want church, us, the people, to be worshiping in examples of Jesus seven days a week. To, to come to church and gather like God asks us to, but then go out and make a difference Monday through Saturday. I know I see what God wants to do with his ministry, Rock of Life. It doesn't belong to a person. This is God's. I don't, I don't want to blow it. I don't want to make, I don't want to be complacent. I, I don't want to come in here and just have you guys hear a good message. You go home and just deal with the same things you've always had. At least deal with them in a godly, different way. We are to be challenged. You are to leave here on fire and saying, I, something happened. There was a difference. It's going to carry me. I want to go home. I want to read the word. I want to open the Bible. I want to love my family more. I want to be a better example of Jesus at work. Something happened. Something broke. Here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to have the ushers hand out these pieces of paper too. And you don't have to write on them. I did this once before a couple years ago. And what we're going to do is, if God is asking us to do something, to get closer to him, we're going to focus on that this morning. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is asking, what do we need to add to our life? What do we need to delete from our life? Or what do we need to continue doing that's, that's pleasing God? So what I want you to do is I want you to take a piece of paper, and I want you to think, is there something, as you've read the Sermon on the Mount, is there something that hit your heart that you said, God, I need more of this? i got to add more of this to my life. Or is there something in your life that maybe God said, you know, you really need to delete that from your life. If you read something that hit your heart, whether it was anger or lust or, or some type of, a, of an offense with somebody or you're angry with somebody, you say, no, and you said, Lord, I don't want that anymore. If you dealt with something in your marriage or a relationship, if you valued something more than God, I want you to take this piece of paper. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, where you are. If there's something that you've held on to, I want you to not write it down, but just kind of 
use this piece of paper as a representation of something that you need to delete from your life. Something that God is saying, you know what, it's about time you put that down. So you can hang on this piece of paper. And then what we're going to do is when you're ready to drop it, as Chris starts to play it and as I'm praying, I want you to, to come by the cross. If it's something you need to delete, let's, I'll just throw something. Let's say it's anger. You're angry about something. Or you've dealt with something physically. Or you're mad at somebody. Or you've had this addiction to something and you're just done with it. You want it gone from your life. Come up to the cross. Say, you know what, Lord? I can't carry this anymore. I can't do it anymore. Just rip it up. Say, I'm not, this is yours, God. I'm laying it down. I'm done. Drop it in. And I'm going to have my prayer partners come over here. And don't return your seat. I'm asking you. This is, a, this is a time. This is like a crossroad. This is a pivotal moment where you could take some action. Get prayed for. I want my prayer people to come up here on the left, please. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray for you that there's a life-changing moment right now because you're releasing something to God. It's something that's going to make a difference from here until eternity. And then again, if you have something in your life that spoke to you in that sermon in the Mass, say, God, I want more of that. You talked about, you know, loving more. You talked about, Lord, releasing anger. I want more peace in my life. And you take that piece of paper and you want, Lord, I, I want to I love my wife more. I want to have more love for my spouse, my family members. I want more love, Lord. And Lord, I'm, I'm giving this to you to, to add to me. And then you'll just add it in. And then you'll come up and get some prayer. This is a moment where we can pray and take time to assemble as God's people to have our life wrecked before God. Amen. And I want to pray with you.